Hey everyone, Buzz of Cow here, and we're going to cast the finals, which have finally been played. I know it's been uh, quite a long tournament, and we actually still have one game left, obviously, because we have a upper bracket and a lower bracket, but uh, it's been a really fun tournament so far. So, go ahead and introduce the players here. We got the sweatiest tryhard, whoever that is, going to be the Galzian, and Tom Zeno as the Con F. Um, <coughs> now, I'm not going to lie, my pick ban process here was almost entirely based on Blast Drones, but I was actually hoping to pick the Boneyard. And Tomcat picked it for me first, so this is going to be map one. Quite happy about that. As you can see, I'm going to retire the base runner, and I'm going to go for an Assault Ship Rush. That's my game plan at this point. Now, Tomcat does something incredible right here, but I believe he didn't plan to do it starting out. He's just going to move out with the base runner. Um, but I'm really excited to show you what he did in, in map one, because I thought it was so cool. Um, and perhaps kind of a tip-off that I'm playing a little bit too, too predictably. Uh, so... You know, maybe that has to do with, you know, him being able to watch the replays of the tournament before the game started. Maybe it's just, um, maybe I just always play this way, I don't know, but... I'll have to wait and show you what I mean by this. Anyhow, you know how it is. Step one is find the base runner, and I actually was thinking during the match, I probably should have put this guy, like, over here, maybe, but, you know, it, the positioning is fine. I can't really put it too many places if I'm going to retire that base runner early. Assault Ship Fabrication is going to be a little bit late here, um, and I knew that, but I don't know. I, I, I'm still not quite good enough at this build to get this um, like timed properly. Uh, so there you go, Assault Ship Fabrication comes out at 15 seconds late. I see a Blast Drone here, so I'm like, okay, I know where you are, uh, that is good for me. And Assault Ship Fabrication is on the way for me now. Sandskimmer Armor 1 comes out, and you notice Tomcat's made quite a number of these guys now. There's three of them, here comes a fourth. Yeah, so it looks like to me he was planning on doing this all along. Uh, he's kind of using the blast drone to scout, which I mean in a lot of ways makes a lot of sense because look how speedy this boy is. Doesn't have great vision range, but I mean he's going to catch me out in the middle because I'm looking for him. So he's going to know exactly where I am, he's going to know exactly what I am too. Um, and I don't know if you can see what I'm about to walk into here, but there's, uh, let's see, two blast drones right now. Five skimmers that all have armor one finished. Now I don't have a soldier fabrication even done yet, let alone, you know, one of them on the way. Yeah, are, you, are you getting my picture here now? <laughs> this is going to be the punish of a century. Uh, and Tomcat begins to move out now across the map. Does not want to, you know, take the bait of these um, sand skimmers here, but I, I realized at this point what was going on and I started running away, but I was quite aware it may have been too late for me. Um, and sand skimmer raiding going to come out of Tomcat now. The three blast drones take the production cruiser down to about half health already, and then the sand skimmers here should just be able to finish the job. Um, what a bait, right? I mean, I thought this was incredible when it happened, but I was a little a little disappointed because, you know, I was excited to assault Ship Rush in, but... Yeah, not bad at all, not bad at all. And it's because I'm out there with the Sand Skimmers and kind of a fan to try and find that base runner that this happened to me. So, uh, Production Cruiser starts coming out on the way for me. I need to replace that, obviously. Um, and I believe I end up going for Refiner Mode here, too. But I had the Sand Skimmers there to try and desperately defend the Production Cruiser. That was kind of a mistake, wasn't it? Because now they're all going to get run down anyway. Um, I'm going to get Power Reserve 1 here, and the idea, obviously, is to hold off the Sand Skimmers. One thing I'm really worried about now is that I'll get Blast Drone to death. There's already one out. Second one, pretty much, like, it's halfway finished. Yeah, but it's at 10 seconds away from being done. And then he can come in and Blast Drone my Eco, and, like, what am I going to use to defend against that? I don't even have a Production Cruiser, let alone, you know, Sand Skimmers or whatever. Still, though, Refinery Mode can come out. I'm not going to need those CUs for anything. Maybe I can still make something uh, happen with this, but at this point, it's looking pretty dire, I think you would agree. Um, what an opening. I mean, that is just like class, you know, that is textbook uh, counter striding. I'm so happy to see it. Um, so, yeah. Well done. Well done, Tom. El Gato. So, here come the Blast Drones. And Production Cruiser is finished. He's going to be trying to make a thing, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I do try to block the production, like, the hit with the Production Cruiser there, but that's kind of futile. Four salvagers are going to go down, but he should really probably evacuate the sand skimmers here. I don't think it's worth what he's, like, the losses he's taking. But, um, at this point it's almost like it doesn't even matter. There is an assault ship out, though. And my thought here was, well, if that, if that production cruiser is still out there, maybe I can, maybe I can do some damage. I'm sure enough it is. Um, he should definitely be moving this away, and if he puts power into the mobility support, he can just get out of there. Like, he doesn't need to worry about it. If, if you've got Assault Ships, your opponent probably has to go Railguns, yeah, and I clearly don't have the economy off the back of this to make an Air Force, so I can't easily counter those at all. Um, but look, he's just going to stick it out with his Production Cruiser. First off, I don't really agree with that. Second, fighting with the Sandstorms here is like, 
Technically, you could win this if your micro is really, really good, but I mean, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem likely. Um, I mean, this is a counter, you, you know, you don't want to be that close to it. Uh, so Production Cruiser really just needs to leave, and he needs to get, you know, a counter unit to me, but he's instead going to continue investing into Sand Skimmers right here. Now, it's true, the Blast Drones can do quite a lot. Um, as we saw in that game of mine against Kassarsis, like, the Blast Drones can clearly... They can clearly, you know, like, destroy the Assault Ships, but not really in the way that you want. Tomcat's going to go for another base for another, so it tells you that's what he wants to use. And look, even the Assault Ships would work here, but he has to get the upgrades for it, too, in that case. I've already got defenses one. But this is a game that you must win at this point. Um, and the way to do it is to get Railguns, I think. He, you know what he's probably doing is saving for Siege, but that just takes way too long. The tech itself is like 90 seconds as well, so... Here come two Blast Drones in on that Assault Ship, gonna wreck him. Still though, if he wants to take this fight with this guy, um, he's gonna take a lot of losses, right? I obviously need to be microing him a bit better here because I'm not really I'm not really doing the best in that regard. You see me like realize it now and now I start microing him, right? Oh wow, maybe he's not actually gonna take any losses. Well that's more my fault than his, but you know. The real story though is that I'm up in his base now with a bunch of assault ships here. He can still hold this off maybe with the carry, but it's gonna be difficult. Um, this is the splitting that you want to do, by the way. It's definitely where you, how you want to be moving your units. And he's going to hope to stop this just using Blast Drones. He's got none left on his main base runner, though. His secondary is just finished now. So they're going to run in here, and I realized that a little bit too late. I was like, ah, oh, shoot. <laughs> See, he is going to hit. No, he's not. Oh. Anyhow, there is one guy up here, though, doing ether damage. And now now suddenly things are looking pretty pretty risky for him. Soul Chip Fabrication starts coming out. But that's a little too little too late. I think he needed to just get railguns, you know. I mean, that would obviously be like the, uh, the wise choice here. And now I see it's not really worth much to me to have my production because around the open here. Maybe I'll pull him back. I have refinery mode, remember? So I can uh, focus on economy, try to get a second base set up. Um, and I can keep up this pressure with the assault ships because I still have some in his base. Um, and I always will, like, until he can find some way to, to root me out here. But assault ship fabrication is still, you know, 10 seconds away. So railguns would have been a much stronger counter. They would have been a much better counter. They should have come out faster, whatever it was going to be. Um, this is definitely problems now for Tomcat. So. Kind of funny how this is turned, isn't it? But he could definitely still win this. And I realize now, like, well, I really need to be stopping extractions. So I'm not going to have this guy go up to the base to do pressure. He's going to, you know, stop the, the base runners there. Um, but base runners are way out of position. They can't make any blast runs to stop this one. Assault ships are in the base, and they're, they're killing salvagers right now. So... Uh, that guy, maybe I could have gotten if I dove in with him, but... That carrier is blocking rather effectively, I'm just going to have to back away from this one. I was really hoping to get this base runner, but apparently the, uh, the soul ship like, doesn't really know how to attack. You see what I mean here? I just, I just learned this today, but if you just tell him to attack a base runner with an artifact, he won't actually shoot at it. <laughs> you have to just give him a move command, so... That was a little interesting. Base runner came out and instantly blew itself up, by the way, I don't know if you saw that. That's probably a mistake, I don't really know what he was going to get done with that. But anyway, it's clear to me once Tom pops the smoke here, which he's just done, that I can't catch this guy, so I'm just going to come back and double down on this one. Brings the scoreline to th uh, a rather uncomfortable 3-0, but um, that should be okay for me. Army of Defenses 2 is coming out here, which is obviously, you know, symbolic that I, I want to push out here again. This is also the base runner that still has the Blast Runs, mind you, so it's not going to be a valid counter anymore. Um, and Tomcat has gone for Interceptors now, rather than making any Assault Chips, and I guess I can't blame him in some ways, because I feel like he wasn't going to stop these guys with assault ships of his own, but still, it, it seems like a bit of a a bit of an optimistic game plan. Carrier block is real, man. Dang. I don't even know how it's getting blocked from that far away. But, but here come these three. So probably they should have pushed in at the same time, but that's, that's fine. Interceptors are going to come in here. Um, so I know that these guys are probably going to die, but that's okay to me. I, I don't really care. Um, We're, you know, we're heretics. We don't really care about our people, right? And this guy can come back in, obviously. Brando. <laughs> Are you seeing that? <laughs> anyway. Uh, 
as you can see, there's not much eco left to speak Oh, there's even another guy coming in. That's just painful. Yeah, there's not much eco left to speak of, is there? And Tom wants now to just salvage these ba uh, salvagers. Retire, that's the word for it. But actually, that one gets taken out too. I thought that was kind of insult to injury, right? And I believe he just, yeah, he just retired his production cruiser. Not sure. I guess, I mean, he figured he was going to die anyway, but I don't know. I mean, there's not really anything good you can do in this type of scenario. I'm going to be on three bases before too long, and I think we all know where the game's going to go from there. Now, when I saw him retiring his uh, production cruiser, this actually slowed me down from killing him a bit, because I kind of thought, like, oh, well, he's going to go for some kind of a, uh, he's going to go for some kind of a power rush now or something, so I better, you know, like, stock up against that. So I'm going to get power reserves and a lot of base runners. I didn't need to do that, actually. I could have just, like, come in there and killed him. I didn't realize, though, so... Um, never hurts to be safe though, but it is going to be a little bit unenjoyable to watch. So I think we'll fast forward this just a bit. And uh, Arians can pick off assault ships, but it's not really very impactful, is it? There are already, um, you know, missile ships out on the field too, so... Things are going to be tough for Elgato. Uh... Railguns are on the way for me, and this is because I'm thinking again his carrier is going to push me. As you can see, he's actually filled out Nico again. And I think he's going to just try to play like standard from here, but obviously there's not really any chance for that. Um, maybe going for a carry rush is not a bad idea, and we saw in Shrike versus Evers, for example. Oh my gosh. Frosty Teeth versus Evers? <laughs> uh, anyway, we, we saw that this could, be, um, this could be effective, right? But, uh, you know. You do what you can. Obviously I'm just waiting for these artifacts to tick back up now and then I'm going to extract again. I already have three extractions. Once I get fifth I'll be fine. Powers are fives on the way too. So I kind of wanted to just tell Tom like what he was up against at this point. You can see I'm going to move my carrier here because it's, it's actually quite awkward to like move around the, um, the line of sight blockers with the carrier there. But yeah, I just went ahead and used the, um, the missile barrage for powers are five. And kind of what I was trying to do here was say like, hey, uh, I've got power 5, so... <laughs> this wouldn't really be a good use of the Missile Barrage normally, but, you know... What else am I going to use it on? I mean, I get the Eco, I guess, so. Um, and again here, I can definitely uh, push in with the carrier and kill off the production cruiser using speed, but I didn't want to do it because I was still a little afraid, you know, maybe something, maybe something sneaky is lurking back there. I just really want to play this one as safe as I can because I would feel really dumb if I lost at this point, so... <laughs> Honestly, that's what was going through my mind. I'm going to move the carrier over here, though. Look at that map coverage, hmm? I can see it all. It's like creep or something. All right. Well, base runners are very close to the extraction. There's obviously nothing that can be done to stop them. There's a missile ship like two actually in position to stop the um, interceptors, and I'm also ready to move in with the uh, the railguns to finish off the game the normal way. So basically, no matter what I do, I'm gonna win here. But um, I don't know. Tom Cat obviously lost this one, but he almost deserves the win, doesn't he? Like that counter strategy in the beginning was beautiful. And uh, really quite unexpected for me. So, there goes that fifth artifact. And there goes the game. So, you know, obviously um, I was feeling pretty comfortable at this point, but I did know, like, no, I'm, not, I'm not playing with a fool here. He knows what he's doing. So, that was the situation. Let me just load in the um, file now for map two. If I can find it. Oh, gosh. Oh. Yeah, okay. All right. So map 2 is Firebase Crew, and this one's my pick. I actually had to think about this one for a while. Shallows would obviously be good for stopping the uh, the base runner, uh, sorry, the blast drones, but I didn't want to play on the map. Um, and then my other thought was Kalash Teeth, but I was like, yeah, let's go Firebase Crew. And then actually, Tomcat picks uh, Kalash Teeth for map 3, so uh, I, I was pretty happy about that, because that's a map obviously where it's very easy to finish off, I'm sorry, to stop the um, blast drones from getting in. Anyhow, my thought on this map was, well, okay, he's clearly clearly done a bit of counter stratting, um, you know, as far as, like, how do I say? Like, the way that he took out my, uh, my production cruiser there was quite nice. I don't think I can feel safe not having skimmers in the beginning, 
So I'm just going to go with my standard build here. I know it sounds funny to say I got counter strats and I will play standard, but <laughs> you know, you know. Um, that was my plan here. Now obviously this is a really nice position to drop the scanner if you want to catch the blast drones because there's no way they're going to get here fast enough. Right? And so now you can watch the entire junction. Although I may have... Did I cover that totally? Yeah, I may have left a little bit of a hole in it, but it's it's not a big one. I would have seen the blip anyway, and I think I would know exactly what that meant. Blastrum's actually just gonna careen down middle right here. I was like, oh, whoa. Um, I already have a sand skimmer out. The production cruiser backs up, but I realize that's kind of an overreaction. I can keep moving out. Um, but I just, I definitely don't want to do what I did last time, where I'm looking for the blast drones so much that I leave this guy completely undefended and he gets killed. Now the hope is that I can tickle this guy to death. Um, so he's going to try to run uh, through the middle, and that's going to prove to be quite a fatal mistake here, because obviously there is a sand skimmer there. He is going to probably get the scouting. Oh my gosh. Whew, this guy's got, he's got moves. Did you see that? Anyway, he is going to get the scouting information, though, that the production cruiser is here. He hasn't seen it. Okay, he just did see it, but like he definitely would have known anyway. Like, oh yeah, well that's the production piece right there then. Last drone goes down, I'm feeling pretty good about that. There is still one out there, so I need to be careful, but you know, I'm not really too too worried about that anymore. At this point I realize, well, okay, so I can go back to um I can go back to Eco, but I really don't want to. That's kinda boring. So instead I decided I was gonna go for railguns this time. Last time of course it was the assault ships, this time I'll go rails, you know, mix it up a little bit. Um, but still be a little bit unpredictable in the sense that, you know, I'm, I'm going to stay close with the PC and then move in with railguns. That's not really what you would expect, especially having seen it forward this far with this many sand skimmers. You're not going to be thinking that railgun fabrication is coming. Um, I want to do some damage to that second base if it's possible. Assault ship fabrication is coming out for Tomcat. It's definitely something to be careful about. I'm really just trying to be careful about these blast drones right here. Uh, I never want to have more than one sand skimmer like together, um, close enough to where they can be killed. But as you can see, it's uh, difficult for him to select them at all. Wow. But anyway, it's it's difficult for him to find an opening here. It's pretty easy to just kind of like back away a little bit, especially with I, when I have high ground up on here. I can back one of them away, right? The other ones don't want to engage just one sand skimmer, and then um, I can probably probably kill them off if they try to push me like that. I was a little worried, maybe the, sand, uh, the blast drones got away through this side here, so you can see me backing away the um, sand skimmers. And then I just heard enemy armor inbound, so c clearly there are some armor units on the way, might as well back off, but I know that this is going to work out well for me because I've already got a railgun out on the field, so I'm going to keep up pressure with the sand skimmers, this is something I like to do. Rather than just having your, your line act almost as like a bubble and just like bulge out in every direction, Instead, just like acted as a bubble around his production cruiser, and so you keep some guys up in this side. Unfortunately, I did lose this to the blast drone, which kind of makes things a little bit weaker. But I have my railgun out now. It's a heavy railgun too. Um, I'd like him to actually be shooting. I think I made a comment about that in game. Uh, but yeah, you know, he can just he can take out this assault without too much difficulty here. Not sure what this guy plans to get done, but <laughs> but that's fine. Anyway, I know he wants to push me now off the back of this, so I need to be careful. Um, but I do have two production cruisers, I'm going to start making assault railguns. Those are the wiser choice in this scenario because they can deal with the blast drones, and they can still deal with the assault ships, but also with sand skewers, which might be made to counter the heavies. Having one or two heavies, though, never a bad idea in this scenario, um, so, long as you can, so long as you can keep them safe. And I, I feel like I can. Army Dude Defenses 2 is coming on, I like that a lot. I feel like uh, if you want this push to work, that's kind of something you need to try, like, consider getting. But yeah, I know the real danger here is the blast drones, so I'm just going to take them out with the sand skimmers with the assault railgun. That shouldn't be an issue. They go down. And now I can hold the assault ships without too much difficulty either. Refiner mode is also coming out for me, and I feel like that's going to work really well. Uh, an extraction starts coming out again, like my second extraction that is. Tomcat is going to get one, so it brings the scroll into 1 1, but it will soon be. It will soon be 2 1. And now I think, okay, well, I can counter push off the back of this. Um, Tom getting a second production cruiser here. Now, pull up a chair, friends, and I will tell you a tale. A tale of. A tale of a man, the sweatiest tryhard, perhaps, named Bozo Cow, who likes to choke. And I'll tell you why he does this. He makes too many heavy railguns. 
Everyone knows it's true. Uh, <laughs> obviously, the scenario here. It, I mean, okay, it's good to have heavy railguns, but um, I've I've often said it myself about sand skimmer rushes, which is why I definitely should know that it's true. If you're gonna, or sorry, railgun rushes. If you're gonna do a railgun rush, what really holds you up is the sand skimmers, because if your opponent can get strike craft superiority, he just takes out your railguns, right? In this case, maybe assault railguns is the better choice. But at any rate, heavy railguns is the wrong choice. Like guaranteed, because it gives your opponent the option now to make some kind of a some kind of a tech switch. This is one of the strongest things about a railgun rush is that the Galazian have access to this unit, which counters armor and uh, strike craft. So what is your opponent supposed to do to, to stop that thing? Um, obviously he needs to go for railguns, and if he's already gone for assault ships, he's sort of locked into that tech path. So why why would you make heavy railguns in this scenario? I don't know, because because you're bozo cow. <laughs> And that's just what you do. I did notice this was happening, so that's, I feel pretty good about that. I managed to stop the, uh, stop the blast drone from getting too many railgun hits, so I do split them up, so only one of the assault railguns is going to go down. But you can see exactly what Tomcat is doing here. It's a pretty textbook, just make lots and lots of sand skimmers, like way too many. Except it's not too many, it's, it's just as, exactly as many as you need. Um, and the more heavy railguns I make, the more difficult this is going to be to hold off. And suddenly my position is quite precarious. Another thing he's doing is hiding them, like, really nicely. Uh, this is pretty cool. I have no idea that this is coming in. But here they come. And just mixing one blaster into the mix. Mixing into the mix? Well, you know what I mean. Really deadly stuff there, too. Where is he actually going? And it looks like he's just running off to the end. I can kill off all the armored units. That's no problem. Um, and my DPS is quite high. Maybe I can kill off the, uh, like, maybe I can kill off something else, too. But, like... Well, not if I'm not even targeting them, that's for sure. But, yeah, this number of sand skimmers is going to be a bit of an issue for me now. If you look at the units tab right here, Tomcat's got 14 of these guys now. So this is where it starts to really snowball and it's difficult to hold them off. I know what I need to do, I'm pretty sure. Sand skimmer armor is not the thing, actually. I probably should just cancel that. Um, what I need to do, really, is just uh, get a bunch of assault railguns now and get their armor up. But it's going to be hard to get up to a critical mass to where I can fight these sand skimmers because... You know, there's, uh, there's a lot of them, <laughs> and I'm not going to have many of these Assault Railguns, so this is going to hurt when he gets back to my base. We'll, we'll put it that way. I mean, look at the numbers, though. It's crazy. Uh, well, that's obviously not meant to happen. It's 18 to 5. 18 to 5, yeah? It's probably more than that. You can just look at the units tab, I guess. Yeah, 20 to 4, so... He's got quite a few of these guys. Now, the question becomes, when is he overbuilding? Um, because he did this last game too, right? Like, he just needed to, you know, come up with, like, a counter to that. Now, my, my next, um, my next move, if you know, if you know what I'm saying. Like, the only way that I could win the last game is if I went for those, uh, if I went for that assault ship push. So, I, you know, I did, and I won. Um, probably, yeah... Probably Tomcat wants to be thinking ahead here, so not just like, okay, well look, I'm going to do tons of damage here, but I'm going to do tons of damage here, what do I do in, off the back of it? Probably the answer is save up to refinery mode, pull them back, and then just be on three bases. And then, no matter how much damage you do here, you're, you're almost certainly going to be up on top, right? Production cruiser goes down for me. Now my carrier is nicely powered up because of my three artifacts. That's very lucky for me. But, uh... Gonna take that carrier a long time to kill off these sand skimmers, to put, to put it simply. He's gonna go for this production cruiser too. I don't think he'll get it though. I think the damage output is just a little bit too high on this carrier. But you see what he's doing? He, he's still making sand skimmers. I think that's really his problem here. These guys are still here. They're still making sand skimmers. He's actually not coming. He's not getting any further ahead. Right? And so every time that I can keep a railgun alive, suddenly I'm actually technically getting ahead now, right? He just needs to, you know, back away with refinery mode, I think. Now, really, uh, sorry, Interceptor Fabrication is a good choice, actually. Um, but yeah, these guys really, I don't think, have any business being here any longer. That guy. Matt. <laughs> Dude, Matt. <laughs> Ma <-ot. laughs> Oh, boy. I get Power Reserve 1 here, actually, so that I can get the speed up. Um, also, you notice the blaster in there? I realized, like, what, there's no second one. Oh, he's coming in this way! Um, yeah, it was pretty lucky for me that I got Power Reserve 1 because I'm going to need the speed here. Otherwise, my carrier's kind of out of position and he can go for this guy again. 
So, yeah, I think we were kind of on the same wavelength there, he and I, but that's probably good for the defender, yeah. Yeah, but he's still going for the railguns because he wants to eliminate the DPS. And I guess that's fine, right? But you're not getting anywhere, remember? I mean, I, I literally just said that, but I think that's really the problem with this, is that it's not getting him anywhere. It's just kind of keeping both of us down, whereas he wants to keep me down and get up himself. Imagine you hold both of us down in a pool of water, we'll just both drown, you know? You want to live too, right? Does that work as an analogy? I'm not really sure. One thing I did realize was like, hmm, this guy's maybe a bit far forward. Uh, so he's definitely going to take a bit of damage. But at least it baits the Sandstorms to come back in here. And if they choose to engage, you know, against these Soul Railguns, they're probably going to take a lot of losses. And he still hasn't moved back. Still no refinery mode, so... That's going to be problems. I can also always retire this guy, but I actually figured he was going to live. Um, but... You can see it was pretty close, but there's my third production cruiser being out. Re uh, refinery mode is done, so I can get onto three bases now. Toot sweet, I guess you would say. Um, I'm gonna have a really good game from here. Fourth extraction goes down too, by the way, so that's definitely that's definitely uh, noticeably important. Now, I literally said to myself, okay, well, I better I better um, be on top of the anti-air transition. Uh, but then I don't do it. You can see I've got missile ship fabrication finished. Okay, I'm ready. But I'm just like, uh, building those guys, mm, maybe not. <laughs> One thing I noticed, like, if I can kill this uh, base runner before he gets to the artifact there, I can, I can pop him off, grab that one, and now I have potential to just, like, win the game right there. So I went ahead and did that. Uh, but yeah, air units are going to launch. Assault railguns are just kind of chilling out here in the middle. It's rather silly. The, the desire to counterattack is always there, but you gotta you gotta be aware of what your opponent's gonna do to you. And you can see the sandstorm's running too. He definitely wants to capitalize on this as much as he can. Actually, I'm not sure really how much the sandstorm's gonna do in this scenario, but you know the the idea is there anyway. And actually, one thing he notices is like, oh well, I guess I've actually got to stop this guy. Um, so. So this, this dude is going to get out of there like, oh my gosh, he's going to escape with his life. Yeah, like I said, I knew I needed anti-air, I just, I just didn't get it fast enough. It's, it's something rather silly, I, I often do this. Pull up a chair and I'll tell you a tale. <laughs> but Base runner is certainly going to be killed here. But hey, he tried. You can see how long that um, the base runner heal can keep him alive there. It's like the ultimate troll move. Well, no, it's not as good as the Con F1 is it, but it is a pretty good troll move. That accuracy though, right? Wow. Anyhow, missile ships are coming out on the field now. I want to move them back over here because I actually want to cover my eco. One thing I thought was like, well, if he's got this many interceptors, he'll probably go for like an eco snipe now, and that could uh, that could elongate this game way much more than I'm way much more than I'm really wanting it to. So just we got to keep my eco covered for now, and then I can use the missile ships a bit more aggressively in a second. He goes for an extraction here, and he's actually already gotten two. the The map control has been so fluid in this game that there's been a lot of extractions. So. Afterburner coming up for Tomcat now, obviously a good tech to get whenever you've got air. Excuse me. Now, I was honestly expecting him to have more eco than he does in this scenario. As you can see, like, refinery mode's not even on the way, he doesn't even have the money for it. Uh, so, I was worried that actually a bunch of sand scares were coming out now at this point. And that was, you know, that was like what I was um, really worried about the most. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm going to start making a bunch of base runners, or sorry, assault railguns now. Um, so, I'm covered for air, I'm covered for uh, skimmers, I'm feeling good about that. Turns out I don't even really need that, do I? Um, obviously, like, just mass uh, missile ship wouldn't necessarily cut it, but I don't need as many as I'm going to make here. But, you know, it's always better safe than sorry. Um, so you can see I'm going to make quite a few of those guys. 
Interceptors are still up in the air, um, and I actually was kind of worried I was maybe maybe throwing these guys away, pushing out here. But one thing I do is I toss a scanner there to see what's going on and say, okay, Sandscaper's moving this way, so he is definitely responding to the base runner. Um, and as you can see, I've got rather a nice anti-air battery over here. I've got lots of... Uh, ew, that's nasty. I've got lots of um, uh, assault railguns and, like, the carrier in the area. So if he does want to take out this base runner, he's going to have to do it at extreme cost. And that is indeed the case, as you can see here as air units are going to be going down left and right, so... That's going to be pretty painful. Backstab coming over on this side as well is pretty strong. Um, there's only one air unit left, so all this anti-air, what is it even really doing anymore? But, you know, whatever. And more and more assault railguns are on the way. There's still two blast drones on the field. I love how often that gets made. Anyhow, uh, you know I used the barrage there. You know I did. Am I actually going to kill this guy, though? <laughs> well, I can't say that was intentional. Um, but yeah, I can just move right up into the base here. And Tomcat is on full route, but I mean, where does he go? There, there's, uh, there's a wall here, so he can't leave. I know, I know it's like not necessarily, you know, finished, but there, there's a wall here, so he can't leave. PC goes down now, another one. And, uh... This is quite a couple of assault railguns here. I kind of realized at this point, like, you know what? I can actually just, like, go kill his carrier with these things, probably. Uh, you can't usually do this. Like, if you've ever tried to kill the, uh, the Galzian carrier with his 40 armor, with a unit that does 50 damage, like, it takes a bit of time. But the Con F carrier is a weak boy, so he can actually be killed by this. I thought that was kind of a funny end to the match. And there you have it. That's going to be a 2-0 for me. I honestly feel like both games, Tomcat should have won at some point. But then again, game two, I should have won at the beginning, so, you know. It's, it's kind of a pity that both of us choked in this manner. Uh, banner, in this manner. But hey, as long as I can get the win, I'm fine with it, yeah. <laughs> and that is going to be the game. Well played to him, though. I think those were... That was really loud, I'm sorry. I think those were good games. I think those were good games. Hope you enjoyed it too, and I'll just kind of put the, the crown on my head here. I know, I know, rigged, rigged, whatever, but look, I'm not the only tournament organizer. They could kick me out whenever they want. They haven't done it yet, so. <laughs> um, Righto. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next time.